Sonic, the heart of your system. What's up guys, welcome back to another DJF video and today we're gonna to be doing a quick preview on the Z390 platform. More specifically, in front of me, I've got the Z390 Tai Chi Ultimate from ASRock. Now, the benchmarks and all that kind of stuff isn't really due uh, for another few weeks, so there's uh, not too much I can go into uh, benchmark-wise, uh, not too many real in-depth uh, specifics, so I can really just cover the board, and I want to sort of show you what ASRock are bringing to the table with their Z390 Tai Chi Ultimate. Design-wise, we see ASRock are sticking with their X470 Tai Chi Ultimate theme. I think this is good, as overall, I find this theme and layout quite appealing. I'm really digging the monochrome look and should go well with most builds. Then we have ASRock's polychrome RGB on the IO cover, chipset heatsink, and audio cover. To me, onboard RGB works well with this type of motherboard color palette, as we don't have a heap of other contrasting colors. You'll also find two standard 12 volt RGB headers and one 5 volt addressable RGB header. I really wish ASRock would throw a second addressable RGB header on there for multi zone support. With the Z390 platform, you have support for both 8th and 9th gen processors with support for up to 64GB of memory running at 4200MHz plus OC. The Tai Chi boards have always been good in power delivery and this one follows suit. There's an IR digital PWM with a 12 phase power design with a 60 amp choke. Power input, there's eight and four pin EPS connectors. You'll want that extra four pin for that beefy 9900K. For multi GPU support, you'll get full 16 out of the first slot, of course, and running two GPUs, both slots will run at eight by and eight by, basically the same as on the Z370 platform. All three M.2 slots support both PCIe Gen 3 by 4 speeds as well as SATA M.2 SSDs. But due to this, if any of the M.2 slots are used with SATA SSDs, their opposing SATA ports will be disabled, as bandwidth is shared across them. Also, the bottom M.2 slot supports up to 110mm long M.2s and also includes a full cover heatsink, which also includes a large thermal pad. Six SATA 6GB ports are also included on the Tai Chi Ultimate, which is basically the standard these days, and they are all at right angles. Now, if you're a bit of a networking nut, this is where this board really shines. Included on the Tai Chi Ultimate, you'll find two standard 1 gigabit NICs, one running off an Intel i219V, and the other running off an Intel i211AT. Both of these NICs support teaming as well. There's also the inclusion of an Acquainter AQC107 10 gigabit network adapter. This isn't anything new to ASRock and they've been doing this for quite a while. We've tested this chip on their previous boards and found out it worked really well. Then lastly, ASRock have upgraded their wireless LAN adapter to the Intel 2T2R. This will allow you to run the full AC with two antennas at 167 megabits per second, rather than the slower 433 megabits per second, which was found on the previous Z370 Tai Chi motherboard. USB support is where we see an improvement over the older Z370 Tai Chi. On the rear I.O. alone, we see a bump from just two USB 3.1 Gen 2 to a total of four USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, three being Type-A and one being Type-C. There's also four standard USB 3.1 Gen 1 USB ports, a DisplayPort version 1.2 and a HDMI port. Thank God there's no DVI or a D-Sub port. Internally, you'll also find a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C header running often as media controller. Audio on the Taiji Ultimate, you'll find a Realtek ALC1220, which is the same as on their Z370 Taiji board, and runs off the Creative Sound Blaster Cinema 5. So that's basically the board there. As I said earlier, just a quick preview, as there's not really too much I can go into, especially the benchmark wise. I will be uh, checking out the CPU uh, a little bit later in a few weeks. I do have a 9900K, so we'll be doing some benchmarks. So I'll probably compare it against an 8700K and a 2700X. It won't be anything too in-depth. Uh, we don't really do uh, too many CPU reviews, so I'll just be sort of covering the basic uh, aspects of the CPU and just putting them head to head. And I also will be doing a launch build based around uh, this platform and the 9900K, so stay tuned for that. Uh, just a few little things I wanna cover on the board. Uh, I really do like the uh, color layout, uh, the design, the black and white monochrome, I think works really well. Well, not so much white, uh, sort of the black, gray and the silver works well. Uh, one thing I didn't cover are all the fan headers on this board. This board has a whopping eight 
and, and out of those eight, seven uh, feature the, uh, the water pump feature, which is pretty sweet. So if you do need a ball with a heap of uh, fan headers, this is probably uh, a good option you can go with. But yeah, once again, really nice looking board, uh, jam packed with features. And uh, I guess we just gotta wait for a few weeks to uh, see how the benchmarks are and how the uh, CPUs perform. But yeah, that's it for this video. Just wanna thank Azrock for sending this out to check out. Wanna thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for next time.